Nemo Radio is on the air. A, B, C. A, always B, B, C. Closing. Always be closing. Always be closing. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Put that coffee down. Coffee's for closers only. Come after me! I'm a man! I'm 40! Hey, it's John Nemo. Welcome back to another episode of Nemo Radio. Wanted to share some more sales secrets with you. I just had such an illuminating conversation on LinkedIn with a prospect that really revealed to me how we win or lose based on client selection. You know, my business coach put it really well recently, John Michael Morgan on a call, on a coaching call. He said, the quality of your life often depends on the quality of your clients. For you, you know, for me and you, if you're a small business owner, a coach, a consultant, a franchise consultant, an accountant, a CPA, a bookkeeper, anyone that runs their own business basically and has to deal with people on a daily basis, your clients often dictate the quality of your life. Are they calling you and bothering you? Are they complaining all the time? Are they making you miserable? Or are they really a good fit? And one of the interesting dynamics that often comes up in sales and sales conversations and qualifying prospects is the idea, uh, this core concern that the prospect might have of, listen, I've tried other companies just like yours before and had terrible results and you know I'm super skeptical. And so that was the conversation I had. And I wanna tell you two things, one of, one being how I used to react and then the other one being how I react now and why that's a much better way. So the situation was basically, I had reached out to a prospect on LinkedIn in a niche that I've done very well in. And I said to the prospect, hey, you know, are you interested in my free content, my free tips? The way that I do lead generation is I, obviously the riches are in the niches with LinkedIn. So I will create a specific piece of content for a group. So in this case, it was actually a franchise consultant I reached out to and I said, hey, I wrote, I literally wrote a whole book, LinkedIn Lead Generation for Franchise Consultants, an ebook that shares all my industry specific franchise consultant type tips. So if you're a franchise consultant specific to you, here are my best tips on how to generate leads, how to, you know, optimize your profile, what kind of messaging to use, you know, examples of clients I've done this for and show you how things can look and all these different areas. And then I've also put together a walkthrough video for franchise consultants specifically of, hey, here's how I work with franchise consultants. Here's how I do done for you lead generation for them. Here's the process from A to Z. Along the way, I'm going to show you examples of real clients I'm doing this for and have done this for so you can see what the quality of my work looks like. You can see what the strategies are. You can see the end results. And that's a really powerful tool. And then I do the same thing in other niches, small business, business coaching, regular consulting, you know, accountants, bookkeepers, and CPAs. And again, the whole idea for you is make sure that with your LinkedIn outreach and your content, you're niching as much as possible to these target audiences. Because at the end of the day, that's really what they want to know and care about is, have you worked with people just like me? Do you understand my industry? Can you really help me? And I go all the way back to when I started back in 2012, I literally quit a safe six-figure day job and I had one client enough money for 30 days. The one client I had was a debt collector. Now, I had known this person because before I quit my day job at the time, I had spent a couple of years working for the uh, trade association for debt collectors. Okay. And so it was a big, it was called ACA International. It's still around. And basically I worked all day, every day as the PR guy for the trade association, helping debt collectors. So I had a two year crash course in the debt collection industry. I learned every single term, all the industry jargon. I learned what the biggest pain points were for debt collectors in terms of public relations and you know, content and sales and marketing and how they run their businesses. So when I left, I literally had the one client who was a debt collector I'd met during that time who's like, hey, I wanna hire you to do marketing for me, build me a website, blah, blah, blah. So I literally took his money, which was enough for 30 days and did his project. And then I went on LinkedIn and I hyper niched my whole approach that said, you know, my LinkedIn profile headline at the time said, you know, my name, John Nemo, and then it said, you know, De uh, LinkedIn lead generation services for debt collectors, or it probably at the time actually said like marketing and PR services for debt collectors. That's what you want to use in your LinkedIn headline is the service you provide and then for a target audience. So with your LinkedIn professional headline, a little bonus tip here, 
basically have it say whatever the service is for a target audience. So for me today, it's LinkedIn lead generation. That's the service. And then four, and then I put a couple niche audiences, franchise consultants, small business owners, entrepreneurs, business coaches, whatever. So for you, same thing, right? And, and basically that's how I got my first client. And then what I did on LinkedIn was I reached out to more debt collectors because I had one client who was a debt collector and I had worked in the trade association. I said, hey, do you need help with marketing, PR, websites, copywriting, lead generation? I work with debt collectors. Look at my LinkedIn profile. It was all about, you know, what I do. I help debt collectors, you know, generate leads, improve their, you know, presence on Google, get better reviews, you know, get positive news stories by providing industry specific services. So anyway, the whole point and backing up to the story I'm telling now is I really understand with outreach and marketing, the riches are in the niches. The more you can custom make content for little niche audiences that showcases that you know their world, you know their industry. That was the big lesson I learned from the debt collectors was they said to, a, to me, I've used so many other vendors. It's been so frustrating because they don't know me. They don't know our industry. They don't know the legal challenges. They don't know the financial models. I have to educate every vendor I ever use. What's appealing about you, John, is you already know the industry. I don't have to educate you. There's no learning curve. And you have the marketing and you know PR skills to help me. And so I've never forgotten that lesson. And that's how I approach marketing now. So what happens when you run into a prospect like I did recently who said, hey, you know what? Thanks for sending the book and the video. I just can tell you I've used three different LinkedIn agencies. They were all idiots. Let me tell you why they were all terrible. Um, so I'm basically, he's like, I'm super skeptical. You know, uh, if, uh, you know, if we talk, I want to know this and this and this and this, and I want guarantees and I'm only willing to pay this much. And if it goes over this price point, then I want extra guarantees. And, <laughs> and what I used to do before I knew better was I would say, that's fine. Let's just get on the phone. Let's figure it out. And then I would get on the sales call and I would let the client be a dictator. I would basically take the punishment for their bad experience with previous vendors. So I would lower my prices. I would change my operating methods. I would, you know, give up and give up territory and give up ideas and give up things that I normally do for every client to make them happy just to get the deal. And what inevitably happened was that person was a terrible client. And, and what my business coach taught me was, well, if they've gone through three different agencies on LinkedIn and they've had no success and it was the agency's fault every time, are they really, is the real issue that they just had three horrible experiences randomly with bad agencies or is the client the problem? You know, do they not make good decisions? Are they not a good client? Did they not let these other vendors do what they need to do? Um, and the other bigger psychological factor is, also, this prospect won't trust himself or herself to make a good choice the next time. And I always tell the story from my own experience. Um, when I was first starting out, uh, when I had no money and was in debt, right, starting my own business, um, I wanted to grab the holy grail of Facebook ads. And my plan at the time was to sell online courses. By this point, you know, this is probably 2014, 2015, a couple years in, I had had success on LinkedIn, generating leads, getting myself clients. You know, I had a six figure agency, so I was doing pretty good. And now I wanted to bottle up my secret sauce. And so I wrote a book called LinkedIn Riches, which is still around today. I update it every year. You can get a free copy if you want. I'll put it in the show notes. Uh, and then I also created an online course called LinkedIn Riches. And of course, you know, 10 years ago, the big thing that still is today was online courses. You can automate everything. It's all passive. Just create the online course once run Facebook ads to webinars, it'll just sell itself. Great, I'm all in. So I was like, even though I look back and it's funny because even though my whole thing is LinkedIn lead generation, I went off to a different social network, which is a lesson in itself of like, why don't you just eat your own dog food and LinkedIn, use LinkedIn to get clients, right? And get people to buy the course. And so I didn't because I heard the siren song of Facebook ads and automation and push a button and throw out some money and people will magically buy these, you know, $500, $2,000 courses, whatever it is. So <laughs> I went through three different Facebook ad agencies. I spent $45,000, which I didn't have. So I put it all in business credit cards uh, and I got zero sales. So ouch. <laughs> and I tell this story all the time because uh, it helps a prospect understand I've been in their shoes. I mean, at the time, I did not have the budget for Facebook ads. I was so convinced it would work that I just went in and put it all on credit cards and it flopped colossally. And it took me a long time 
to dig out of that $45,000 hole of credit card debt because that was early in my business and I didn't have a lot of profit margin, et cetera, et cetera. But as any good person knows, the mindset, you know, Winston Churchill quote, success consists of going from failure to failure without loss of enthusiasm. So anyway, I now have that in the back of my head. If another Facebook ad agency approaches me, even today, 10 years later, it says, oh, you should run Facebook ads. And here's why I would not, I would have, not only would I be skeptical of the vendor, I've used three different agencies and all of them, you know, got bad results. And I would also be skeptical of myself and not trust myself to make a good decision. I've screwed this up three times already. Even though this vendor is talking a good game, I've heard all this before. How do I know I wouldn't mess up again and end up another 45 grand in debt? So that's what I'm facing with this prospect on the other side saying, I've already worked with three LinkedIn agencies. I got zero results. I spent all this money. If, you know, but you know, if I work with you, I want guarantees. I don't want to pay this. I don't want to pay that. And what I used to do was I would just basically kowtow to the client, be like, whatever you want. I just want the chance to earn your trust and win your business. And inevitably I'm getting a client who is already coming in punishing me for the past mistakes of other people I had nothing to do with. So the new thing I do that my business coach taught me, and this is so true because you do win or lose based on client selection, I was able to kind of find a way to go back at the person politely and just say, hey, listen, I really appreciate how candid you are. I totally understand that. Here's my Facebook ads story, the nightmare. So I totally get it if I was in your shoes. You know, I would be skeptical too. I would worry about making another bad decision. I said at the same time, for me as, as a potential vendor for you, I don't want to feel like I'm being punished for past mistakes that other people made. I don't want to feel like, you know, you're not going to trust me because other people have hurt you before, right? It's almost like dating. Like, I don't want you to view me like all the other girls, right? Like, you need to give me a fair shake. And so I basically said to the person, like, you know, and and I don't want to cut my prices and demean the value of what I do because you've got trust issues about whether or not this is going to work. And that probably means you're looking for ways this project is going to fail, or you're going to come in having a mindset of if everything isn't instantly perfect, you're going to panic and pounce and say, see, I knew it. Here I go again. I'm losing money. Ah, right. So it was a good lesson for me to kind of proactively say like, you know what? I don't think we're a good fit and that's okay. And so one of the things I've learned is you've got to have this abundance mindset in sales. The great thing for me and the great thing for the clients I work with is there's no shortage of opportunity and no shortage of leads to talk to. Literally in the sandbox I play in on LinkedIn, there's 1 billion members. That's a lot of prospects, right? So you don't have to, uh, you know, give up ground. You don't have to change your model. Every time I've done that, and again, failure is the best teacher. Every time I have changed the way I do things just to try to win a new client, uh, it's been a disaster. Instead, you want to have that strong footing, that control to say, well, listen, you know, I totally understand why you have all these concerns and why you'd want to put all these extra rules and things on a relationship with us. Uh, I don't really want to feel like I'm being punished for the the sins of, you know, other people that have hurt you. So it's probably not a good fit because I have a very specific method to my madness. I do things a certain way because that's what gets my clients the best results. I understand you're coming in questioning that or, you know, not wanting to do it that way, or you don't want to pay me what I'm worth because you're scared you'll get burned again. All of which I don't say this directly, but all of which is your problem. That's your problem as the prospect, not mine. That's not my fault, right? So if I go to a Facebook ads vendor today and complain, none of what my past experience is, is their fault. Like they didn't, they weren't the agencies. They didn't make the choices. They didn't do the creative they didn't mislead me, right? So it's my issues to overcome. And sometimes you got to figure out with a prospect, like, can you get over that hurdle? And I think the thing I've learned is you've got to let them get over that hurdle themselves and stand your ground and say, listen, if you want to work with me, this is this is my system and, and you got to trust me and follow the process. I'm not going to change it all because you want to have more control because you feel like you got burned in the past. So if that's not comfortable for you, that's totally fine. Like, let's let's part ways as friends and not worry about it. And I think for me, there's a lot of freedom in that. There's still that little scarcity bug in your head that goes, oh, but maybe you're, you're losing money, you're losing a deal. And then you just have to have enough experience to go, yeah, but every time I've done a deal and ignored the red flags and ignored the gut 
<laughs> no notifications. Whenever I've taken on a client that I've had red flags about and or whenever I've changed my processes to make a client feel more comfortable or like they have more control, uh, unequivocally a, a disaster. Never been a good thing. Never. Because those are the red flags where a client's coming in saying, I already don't trust you and trust your process. You need to do things differently for me than you do for everyone else. I want all these extra guarantees or things, you know, this, and they end up being the worst clients. And, you know, because yeah, they have that control and that fear and that I've been burned before. And again, you're taking the punishment for their past mistakes. So I love that as an illustrative educational example, I just had on LinkedIn here in real time, um, that exchange and it's totally fine. And I know the person's not going to move forward with me and I hate losing, but I also hate terrible clients more. <laughs> So the, the competitive part of me is like, ah, I know if I can get them on the phone, I could probably sell them, but I'd have to cut my prices and change my stuff. You know, I'd have to have him feel a sense of control. I don't, I don't need to do that. Like I want to keep an abundance mindset. And I have so many good clients that trust me and trust my process and trust my team who, by the way, kill it, right? And do really well as a result because it's like anything else. If you don't trust the person you hired to do the job and let them be the expert they're supposed to be, you're not going to get good results. So there you go. Hope you found that helpful, uh, both as some LinkedIn lead generation lessons with the riches and the niches and how you really want to brand yourself and your content to those niche audiences and really get into their world to demonstrate that you understand their unique challenges. And I know this, the reality with that piece of it is everything's the same. Sales is sales. Marketing is marketing. Human beings are human beings. It doesn't matter what you're selling. And, and I can't say this directly on LinkedIn to prospects. Like, I don't care if you're selling like, you know, some scientific gadget or you're selling, you know, consulting services or you're selling a car wash. Like it's the same principles. It's the same strategies. Because by the way, you're dealing with the same prospect across all industries everywhere, which is a human being. All human beings are wired the same. We all act the same as far as how we make buying decisions. It's just about understanding enough about the industry to know how to position your benefits and the pain and the problem and the challenge and the value. So, but you've got to make people feel like, oh, good, you understand me. Because I'm the same way as a prospect. I don't want someone uh, to be an outside vendor for me, uh, say an accountant or a bookkeeper, if they haven't worked with small business owners or solopreneurs or uh, a, a company that's just like mine, right? That has contractors and not full-time employees and whatever, whatever, right? I want, I want to feel that comfort level because as a human, then I feel like, oh, good, they get me. And that's that piece of it, the psychology of, okay, this person will understand me. I won't have to educate them. They won't be in the dark. And, and that's at the end of the day, really what makes for good relationships. So there you have it. Hope you found it helpful. Appreciate you so much. And we'll see you soon on another episode. 